to this week's One Image My Edit. So this week I'm going to be showing you something that is really, really cool. Um, so in the past, I'd always recommend if you want to sharpen your image to use uh, a high pass filter, um, which is a kind of traditional way of you know sharpening images, how we've done that in the past with Photoshop and it's, it's the one that I usually recommend that you use. But there is now a different method and a different way that is actually better than a high pass filter. So if you're looking to sharpen up your images, make them a little bit more crisper, then this is definitely for you. Now I'm going to show you the before and after, which you can see here straight away how good this method is. So hopefully you can see there the detail that it brings out. So let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to start again from the beginning so I can show you. OK, so how we're going to do this is actually um, it's actually inverted. So what that means is, is that when we make adjustments, we're actually doing it back to front. OK, which makes it uh, a little bit more sound a little bit more complicated than what it is, but it's not. It's really, really easy. OK, but I'll talk you through it as I do it. So the first thing you want to do is um, in your image. So where the background is, you want to you want to duplicate that twice. So hold command J and there you go. You've got your two layer copies there. OK. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the top layer. We're going to be changing that to um, vivid light. And the bottom one is going to be changed to normal. OK, so these are the blend modes that we're going to change them to. Now these blend modes are their contrasting blend modes. So when we use them and put them together, it's going to help us sharpen up the image. OK, so what we want to do then is come up to the um, vivid light. Uh, so the, yeah, the vivid light um, selection uh, image that we just just renamed and we're going to actually invert this. So you're going to press control command I and if I do that, what that's done is inverted the image. OK, so it's opposite. So the idea is, is that because we've inverted it, if we blur the image, then it will actually sharpen it because it's inverted. That's the method behind this technique and it works extremely well. OK, so once you've done that, once you've actually inverted it, then come up to the uh, the blend mode up here and we're going to select vivid light. That's what we selected. Yeah. So now we, we've done that, you can see actually it's it's now turned gray, hasn't it? So the actual gray on there is uh, it works a little bit like um, the um, there's another um, blend mode that you can select um, overlay, which kind of how that works is that it hides everything that's gray. Anything that's dark and the gray it darkens it and anything that's brighter than gray, it will brighten it. So it kind of works on that basis. Now, if we come up to here, if we just go to um, the image and what we're going to do is we're going to. Well, first of all, let's um, let's make this a smart object. I think that's probably a good idea um, because by doing that, it means that you know, you can come back later on and uh, and you can you can go back and change the um, the settings for it. So let's go to um, filter, convert to smart objects, which is there and just press OK. And all that means is, is that when we start doing the treatment on it, we can go back and change it anytime we want. Then what we're going to do is come up to filter and then go to blur and then Gaussian blur, which is here. Now this is where the magic happens because as I increase the blur, so if you look at the radius there, you'll actually see it's starting to get sharper. Can you see? Yeah. So I keep pushing that. That's now becoming sharper where usually this would, um, you know, this would make the image more blurry, wouldn't it? So it's, it's a really, really cool technique. Now you can see here in the gray areas, we're just starting to get the outlines. And when we're sharpening stuff, it's actually the radius there, the pixels is, is talking about the 
the the outline so the thickness of the uh, the pixel so we're, we're increasing that radius now I would recommend you never go above I would say 3 3.5 being the maximum you only need to do this ever so slightly so let's go around two that that's pretty good you can see there there's quite a lot so actually I'll probably drop that down a little bit to about 1.7 that will that will work okay so let's go to okay now the next thing we need to do is come up to the top here where we've we've got our selection and hold down the shift key um, so we got the normal selected as well and then press um, command G and that groups everything together so if we open that up you can see that we've got the different um, the normal yeah so it's all in there it's all in that group folder there now what we're going to do is change this blend mode to overlay and that's what I was talking about earlier so the overlay blend mode will basically you won't see any of the the gray and anything that is um, darker than gray will darken it. Anything that's brighter than gray will brighten it. So this will kind of um, help us just get the final image. Okay. Um, so we want to come down to here to where it says overlay. And that is it. That's the process. So it's really, really simple. So let's go to the history. And then just, just come down to the bottom and take a snapshot. So you can see we've got snapshot one and snapshot two. So what that's going to do i've actually got three because i've started with the um the original there so if i come up to here if we come in so we're looking at that's a hundred percent um so you'll be able to see the difference so this is the before and that's the after okay so you can actually see there that the snapshot one was what i done earlier so let me get rid of that because that's not what i've done with you guys that was um just before so there's the before and there's the after and you can see it makes a massive difference now what you can do as well is come to the opacity and you can just drop that down so I would recommend dropping it down to about 80% but depending on your image it will vary uh, but that just means we're just bringing down that whole effect so again we can click on this group here that does a, the similar thing to before and after you can see there that's the before and that's the after so it does an amazing job and it is so much better than the high pass filter uh, sometimes the high pass filter misses um, parts out that are in darker areas um, so yeah you'll probably find this technique a lot better to use so have a play let me know how you get on post your images up in the group and if you need any help give me a shout take care and i'll see you soon Bye bye